All right, so then which one should we look at? I think the first one we just said we don't want to. I guess the second and third that equally applies. Yeah, the, the second one we said needs a dedicated design session, mm -hmm. and which now that we've shipped 3.0, I think we can actually put on the ballot somewhere. Yeah. Um, and then the third one is also part of the primitive work. Uh, there's going to be a framework type for it somewhere, and once that's done, um, I think we're done. But that's probably going to be also its own session. So then, this one I guess is fair, this one is fair, this one is fair, then we're probably out of time. <laughs> All right. So, I think I asked Jan for input on this. We searched this other one. Did we look at this two weeks ago? Yeah, yeah. We did eventually, uh, or at some point. The first one, and then the third one we've looked at so far. I don't remember looking at the middle one yet. So what is the actual proposal? Then? Honestly, like, as far as I can tell, like, to me, this is not about performance. It's just about usability. Yes. Mm -hmm. It just makes it nice to design. But I don't... The API is fine, but... I don't know what the actual proposal is, though. Um, well, I distilled it down, I think. Still curious how... There was some... There was some stuff oh, here, there discussion, okay. but I think I said, I think I would distill it down to just this. Which I think is reasonable. We now have an enum constraint? Yep. When yeah. we add it? I think, actually, it might have been 8.0. I think. Well, except you can't do lowercase enum, it has to be capital <laughs> enum, because the language has reserved lowercase for future Jeez. usage and. Good enough. Oh, well, but is the capital E enum using the constraint <clears throat> that was added to MSIL for uh, framework 2? Or is it actually a new constraint in MSIL? It's constrained to system.enum. There is no, like, enum constraint in MSIL. Yeah, there is. No, so should, no. Yeah, it, it's totally, absolutely there. Everyone has been like, I can rewrite this in IL. Why won't the language let me do it? No, no, you can rewrite in L, in IL, specifically constrained against system.enum. Just like for delegate, you can explicitly constrain against system.delegate, and it just works. Yeah. In IL, you basically have a base type constraint, and then there are some specialized constraints like default constructor. Okay, because I knew that I knew that it was possible to do in IL in the C yeah. compiler. Yeah. Hit the like, well, we wrote the error message because you guys didn't promise you were going to support it, and then like we shipped. So, yeah. so this, I mean, <laughs> then this seems, ten years later, we changed. It. This seems fine, honestly. As long as Jan doesn't care. Yeah. I think the only concern Jan has, which I share, is like it seems quite random to just well, it's the, don't accept do it, it on one API and not the others. Yeah, um, on one API being get values and not get names? Well, I think there was, let me actually look at this thing. There's, a, yeah, there's a thing in the middle which is like, you know, there there are like 20 methods where it would be a reasonable thing oh, to yeah. do, and Jan's like, it would be unreasonable to do it to all 20. Would be. Yeah, so if you... Uh, in fact, the guy did it to all of them. So. I mean, hasflag is the canonical example of one that I would love to see. Yeah, but hasflag is now optimized by the JIT to not box, be in mind, and be the and check that everyone's been manually doing. Sure, yes. you can also tell the JIT to do it for the generic one. We, we could, so the reason I would like to see a generic one on hasflag is because that way, if I do, like, my enum type A dot hasflag some value for my enum type B, like, they're both enums, it fulfills the constraint, but it's not specific. Yeah, so the guy, uh, he has it, and according to this program, it's about the middle. Uh, so he did it for format, get name, get names, get values, is defined, and all of the overloaded to objects. And then Emo's like, how about, how about just for get values? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think this one in particular, unlike has flag would be beneficial because it's likely harder for the JIT to rationalize mm -hmm. boxing where you're casting array types and things like that. Yeah. Um, the, the code patterns that you could do that in are 
There's a lot. I mean, we could just start with good values and see where it goes. I have to be honest, though, like, now I check my earlier statement. It seems worse to me to just not, like, like, it seems a bit weird why we pick get values, not get names, for example, right? Because if you do it for drop down values, then. Well, get names in particular, there's no boxing because it's just a string. No, but it's the same argument, right? The usability is equally shitty on get names. Because you basically have to say, this, you know, enum dot get names type of some enum name. Which well, is... with get names, so the difference is with get names, it's not returning the enum. Uh, the problem with get values is you you have, enough, you have to do my enum array equal cast my enum array yeah, get yeah. values yeah. type of my enum and you're like I, I wrote my enum so many times on this. Also, one. what is the return type of the get values method that right now non generic system dot array? Yeah. Oh, system dot array. Okay, yeah. well then there's a boxing issue as well. Oh well, it's not boxing. Um, yeah, it is. System. It's actually a t enum array. That has just been cast to a system dot array. But if you actually get its elements, they're not boxed. Well, yeah, so so so, so system dot array is the subtype of every type. So yeah. it's not returning an object array, in which case each object, each entry in the array yeah. is boxed. In this case, it's returning a reference type where there's no boxing. Yeah. And then the contents of it are the actual T enum. Value. So there's no boxing. You just have a. Created. So basically, it's a reinterpret cast. Yeah, basically. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. But it's okay. very counterintuitive because we've been eliminating a lot of these. Like, please cast this object that comes back APIs as I've done that too. So I think that this is. I think that this is good because it eliminates the the. It it makes the return type more concrete. It eliminates a place, well, which is the same as saying it eliminates the place that you have to cast. Uh, so I think that this just. Provides goodness. Could you on do this? Values. It's artificial. Um, there's no nothing tells you like essentially with this one you still get a if you're not using var the compiler will tell you the generic constraint and the destination don't match. Uh, with git names, uh, it's really just a method parameter that you're calling generically for no reason. Can you do this as an extension method? Um, well, yes. You, but it's on over a, what? But you want it for the over type. Enum. Right. No, you, you do you do an extension. You can have generic extension methods, right? So you can, but they, they you have to have an instance in order to have the extension method. Right. But I mean just do default default of whatever. Dot, dot get values. Dot get values. That's, no, that's odd. that is that is honestly <laughs> worse than what you currently have to do. Yeah. So I, I think that this just provides goodness, and if people want to argue about the other ones later, they can. But yeah. I don't think that they provide enough value to add um, All right. array of key value pair string to enum. I would say for parity. You, um, you, if there's get values with this syntax, I think for like parity, it would be nice to have get names. Okay. If you uh, I guess the only other them, one, what does what's format look like? The thing is, it, it only saves you from writing six characters. Literally yeah, yeah. Okay. The uh, reason is not to save characters. To me, the reason is parity. Like, I, I would be surprised if I basically learned to use this method and suddenly, oh, shoot, I forgot. They didn't yet add get values. Let me like, wait five more years. To, yeah. You know, lots of feedback goes in. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I, so, for, I, I, I actually think we should do it for format as well. Because format, you can use gene generic inference on the value that is the input argument. Uh, and being able to use generic inference to eliminate a type argument sounds very good to me. What format? Enum dot. Enum string? dot format. Why don't I just have a format instance method? Or I would just I would because it's 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 shitty if you can't discover it, right? Oh, because Wait, how is that different from two string? Because enums are all art of weird art of. I yeah, don't okay, know that we right. can usefully add. No, you're you're right. It would just be two string at that point. Please, it would be so nice if I could add two string overload that takes a format to enums. Sorry, what? Why no, no, it's being serious. Format? My team refuses to use enums, and I have to keep fighting with it. I was even on email thread today with Steve because he commented on our APIs. He reviewed some of the storage APIs, and he commented, Why the heck are you guys not using enums? <laughs> because my team hates enums. Why? <laughs> For various reasons, including that we cannot add methods to it. Yeah, I mean, but, extension methods are a thing. But, uh, so I'm a little confused. Why format, Jeremy? So the current are the, the there's currently an enum.format yeah. whose signature is type object string. And if it's generic on 
tnum, then it will be tnum value and format. But how is that different than toString, which is what Tanner just asked? Uh, there is an enum.format. It's a static type. It's a static method. Right, right. But it ultimately <laughs> just calls value.toString. Okay. I mean, if the answer is that it's already solved with uh, that we have a toString that takes a format and it's not needed, yeah. then. That, that's what it looks yeah. like. By, by default, toString returns. Okay. The the name and yep. then otherwise it takes the val if you specify d x or f it returns the value formatted to so, hex decimal yeah. or et so enum instance enum instances do have a two string that takes a format string yes yes and one that okay. takes a format provider then I don't care yeah I was just looking at the yeah. list of what he was proposing to genericize yeah. and and, and the then, format has value because it lets you use generic inference to get compiler safety right. Uh, and the or generics plus inference for safety and eliminating an argument, but uh, if it's accomplishable via another way, I don't care. All right, so I think I just have the full list. So we said the first one is goodness. This one we just discussed. What I'm hearing is we don't care. This one we said the value is low, but Crystal said for parity. My k level is low. I can go both ways. Yeah. Um, this is the one that Levi talked about. And then this is the same argument. Right. Well, how has flag actually takes inputs? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I did copy the wrong. House flag is an instance method. Uh, right? Yeah. Yes, it's so a, Why does it take input and why is it an instance? Because it takes this and the flag you want to compare it against. Yeah, and it basically like, doesn't end. And oh, it's not so it's not whether this is a flag, so I should do. No. Oh, I mean, uh, whether it well, has a flag. So, so this is what it is. Oh yeah! Wow, that's a confusing. But thing. now it's it's a generic instance <laughs> method, which I think has yeah. all kinds of weird behaviors yeah. in the gen. So maybe so this one adds zero value right? because the code looks exactly the same. Well, but I think that we would if we were going to do that one because we were trying to make it um, be more compile friendly. It would yeah. be static has flag enum value comma tnum test uh, or something. Yeah, because if you were yeah. also doing this, you're missing parse, which takes a type in a string and currently returns an object. You would do this? So public static pool has flag t enum, t enum this, t enum flag. Yeah, so t yeah. enum value and t enum test. Why do we want it to be static? Instance generic methods are very bizarre. Well, which it has problems. And well, an, instance, an instance method on an enum we would say that the, we actually want the generic to be constrained to the enums specific type already, because you'd want it to tell, help you with as yeah. has flag, a flag's enum type, it wants a parameter that is mm -hmm. the same enum type. You, you want to constrain it on t, this, uh, basically. Uh, because essentially this, like, if it's an instance method, we would have a non-generic and a generic that are the same in it. I don't think the compiler could reason about them, because right. they're, they're equally preferred. There should be a constraint. Can be reinterpret cast as int or as something. <laughs> so we actually have that as an internal API. Like, can I reinterpret cast this? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what that would solve all the problems that you know people have with enums. You could write algorithms over enums. You could do this test as a you know reusable routine. I mean, the JIT will already do constant folding if you do yeah. size of enum equals equals four and then cast it to it so it's trivial to write a helper method that does the right thing you mean i could kind of open code the cast yeah but it would be for specific enum that's what I... right no but given given an enum you can do if the size of enum is four then cast it to int and return int. You, you, you can actually do that and it's constant folded down into the right Yeah, logic. what I'm saying is that now you wrote reusable routine, it's only for this particular enum, it's not for any enum. No, no, you can do it for any enum. And how do you then, what's the type of the parameter? Enum? Yeah, t enum. It's just a generic, <laughs> generic t enum constrict where t enum is sub of enum. Oh, because of this new constraint. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I forgot about that one. I keep forgetting. Yeah. Yes, because it's the like, it's the, damn it, there are things that I can do on enums. Why can't I have this constraint? Well, except it's kind of, that's why I'm pointing out it's a bit unfinished because, yeah, there are things that I can do on enum. I guess I cannot do anything on enum unless I know those tricks. Yeah. Yeah, but that's also what things like a has flag and stuff are for. Uh, they're, the gen they're the general purpose thing, and as of 
2.1 or 2.2, they're optimized in the JIT to produce the code you would manually have written. Which we can't do within core CLR. So whatever. Why not? Uh, we actually went through and removed all of our internal usage of enum dot has flag. Be because order... it was not performant? No, because it, it had good performance, but because method calls have larger IL than just doing regular bitwise operators, it was causing some methods to no longer be inlineable. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> that seems... Sorry, Tanner. All right, so like... He has, is defined as a... Is a uh, engine method for some reason. Well, because it's the same. We also have git name as an. Oh. Git name already exists, that's true, yeah. I can miss this one. Yeah, this is this is what it would look like, though. So, speaking of which, why are these not extension methods? On TE now? Because it doesn't make sense to invoke them on an instance usually. Really? Well, yeah. git names is give me all of the names that are defined for the CNA. You don't want an instance. Yeah, 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 yeah. but those those is defined and it's flag. Is so has flag is is already an instance method or an extension method. Instance. It's an instance method. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I guess the compiler would actually prefer the extension method because it would be a conc it would count as an exact type match instead of the enum call, which is the base type match. Uh, so, so maybe has flag as an extension method would work. And get name, you know, is is in it is it different from two string? I was about to say I think I would never call get name. Yeah, I mean, because it just that one two string seems. <laughs> Well, I think, I, think, magnitude simpler. I think the difference is that <clears throat> two string goes through multiple steps of code logic that yeah. ultimately ends up calling effectively get name. So get name is a shortcut if you know you only want the name of the value. Well, what happens when it's a flags combination? Uh, I'm pretty sure that internally the JIT has handling. Yeah, but then what? like I, I think the way that works is if there's an exact name for that flag it says that flag otherwise it returns the bit value rather than something like X or X or X uh, it'll return null right I mean I will get it to code get enum name names some thingy else return null so literally just looks up the name so if it's a flex enum then it will not find it right well it's a flags enum but it if tries you, to do comma combination. no get name will not no, get name will not correct two string. So then the behavior is different from yeah, two yeah, string. Yeah. In which so case, it makes sense. It's, right? Is this one exact thing who has a well defined name? Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, In that case, so do we care then? Like, what, is that what we will propose? So again, so it's get name, get name, and is defined and has flag could all be extension. Then we'd have to figure out where we're going to put them. Yeah. Um, System.enum extension. But then they would. Mm -hmm. I would not do that. I would honestly follow the current pattern where they're all just statics. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's actually good call. Because then they show up in the IntelliSense on everything and they are kind of mm -hmm. a bit called their case APIs mm -hmm. in general. Yeah. If you make has flag yeah. an extension method, people would kind of get auto upgraded in many cases when they just recompile, right? Yep. Can yeah, which might be desirable. There's some well. benefit to that. Can we define an extension method on the same type itself? Nope, no, it has to be in a static class. class. But I agree with you that it's <laughs> not a good constraint in the language. Yeah, and I argued with the language team about this many times. They say it's not performant. Yeah, they don't have to like go looking type. at every single type. They only yeah. have to look at static types during compilation. <laughs> And you know, and that's you know, somebody commented we could add those as extension methods to enums, but we don't, you know, we don't want to basically keep adding extension holders. Yeah. Every single time you want to add one method, yeah. boom, a new type. Well, which is why we could actually just have a generic like primitive extensions or something in the framework where we have extension methods. Be, just use yeah. GC for that. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think that's that would work. It's in the system right? or environment. So, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> the environment's correctly declared static now. 
Okay. Alright, so then... There's a comment from Grunk in FBG of having screwed up and added an instance member to it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not the end of the world to have those as static non-list yeah. methods. Alright, then let me go to this issue. I stand corrected. All right, I will play the devil's advocate here and ask, so get values and get names return uh, things that cannot be mutated so that we can make them where if you call the new generic one, you get the same answer every time, or do we say, you know what, you're asking for get names, screw it, you get a unique mm -hmm. array. Pretty Stop sure you get a new array right. every time. Like, because we it even said in the comments, yeah. like, we don't care about performance for these APIs. That's fair. I'm, I'm, I, I asked the question for yeah. Bevel's advocacy. Except for Hasfly. Hasfly, we care about performance, and that's basically it. Yeah, I, I think if someone wants to cache get names, they can do it themselves. Yeah. Uh, somebody in chat said the constraint needs to be where struct comma t in. Yeah, if you want yeah. it. The, the difference is that where where underscore e, or where enum is, it can be the system.enum type itself or any actual enum, whereas struct enum prevents it from being the enum class itself because it's a class. <laughs> right. <laughs> so sure. we're. Is that actually all I write? Well, I think it's uh, where t enum. Where t enum colon struct comma t. Oh, yeah, that's what that's not right. Or, uh, yeah. I think that corner kiss syntax. All right, let me copy paste this guy again. Mm. Public partial abstract class is not. I think the the only thing that might be missing is the parse method that I had called out, looking at what's exposed, because that one returns object. Where well, we already have a. I mean, it says on APIs of .NET, we have parse of tina. Do we? Parse of yeah, yeah, we called out of there. Yeah. It's just at the bottom, it just sorts differently. I, was no, I see it right above parse. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, then maybe. Whatever. I see parse of type and string, and then right above that parse <laughs> generic over tenum string. Yep, I was just looking at the, uh, it auto loads to mm -hmm. framework 4.8 in the docs website. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we should, you guys have done that as your friend. We should talk to the docs team and see if they can change that to, uh, Core three. Um, someone suggests that we should have a two object for this dinner because it prevents boxing. Um, I, I don't think we should because two object converts to object. Yeah. Like, if we were to have those, we would. I would think they should be like two int sixteen, two int thirty two, yeah, etc. But you can just use the converter class for that if you really want to. Well, and, and if you want the, I want this long as this enum, that's meant to see that. Yeah, yeah, just so. cast it. <laughs> I, I don't think two objects would want that. Yeah. You can't do that if you have a generic method, but yeah. whatever. That's fair, that's it's called custom. Yeah. That's what unsafe as go to send your the right thing now point. and just, just move on box at that point. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Or just cast because that's free. Only if you're not in the generic method. Yes, if, if you already yeah, have unsafe as tenum, then. then yeah. Yeah, yeah, if you're in generic. <laughs> Don't just, write for interpret cast. Or you could, you know, use the, the casting that the JIT recognizes, which is cast object to object to T. Uh, or yeah, cast an arbitrary t to object to concrete type, and the JIT special case is that, and offers right. minuses away the box for generic structs. Cool. So when are we going to add const cast to the framework? Well, I mean, technically, I, mean, I guess that's what Marshall is for. No, we we already have um, unsafe dot as ref, which yeah. takes it in and returns a ref. Yeah. Okay, so there's our const cast. Right. <laughs> and we don't have const pointers, so you don't need to worry about it there. And we have dynamic cast. It's called dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This table is large enough for me to crawl and hide under. You're going to end up hitting the um, the metal boards under there like I always do. <laughs> then maybe I'll knock myself out and, <laughs> and <laughs> this review will go so much better. 
All right, so then let's close a few things. Um, I guess I have to do the same thing on this side here. This is if only I could find the browser window. Here we go. I can edit your comments, you know, that's perfect. Of course you can. <laughs> Um, add path remove relative seconds API. Didn't we already approve this? Uh, I know we looked at it. Why did it get marked as um, pen, pen or needs more work or whatever at the bottom? So I said needs more work because we gave feedback. Uh, it was the get full path thingy. So the person who opened it, uh, we said, you mentioned you don't want to use get full path because you want to preserve rel relativeness. What's the scenario for this API? Then functionally, it seems get full path or keeping the path with dots seems both okay. Jeremy responds and says, what you want to do is normalize a path segment without it being combined with the current working directory. If you call get uh, path get full path, you're going to get a path with the current working directory and added that to the front. This API will give you back the original one and just removes the, the dots in between. So the goal here is it doesn't actually touch the file system at all. Right. It's just it, it's just dot just parses it. Manipulation. Right. So get full path uses CWV as part of the resolution and this one is like I take in a thing with some dot dots and some dots in it and I remove them and get over it. That that means, remove relative segment should be called source and destination. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Or path and destination. Because we can say path because it matches the overloads and it, but <laughs> buffer should definitely be destination. I agree man has a capital S. So it, it looks right. like what happened was last time this came through, we punted it back to Jeremy saying, like, can you talk about the scenarios more? And then he responded. With a yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So the way I understand this then, leading dots will always remain because they can't actually do anything without touching the file system. So the only thing they would remove were intermediate ones. Where, intermediate dot dots and intermediate dots. Yeah, where the syntax basically yeah. dictates what the output also is. Also you could remove leading dots. Well, single ones, yet. Right. Yeah. Because I, I see the only comment I put in here was someone mentioned using it for URLs and I'm like, I don't think that's a good idea. But then... But, no one responded back. It doesn't just remove the dots, correct? It, oh, it has to collapse the thing, right? Yes. But it's like it so technically the defined, right? You don't have to touch segment. the file system for that. So I'm just yeah. saying that um, the method, I wonder whether remove is the best method name. Because it does more than just remove relative segments. It's collapsing. It's kind of like normalizing. You don't want to use the term normalization. I know, I know. So that's, <laughs> it means something very different. Yeah, and it does more than normalizing, actually. How about pretty fine? What was the Because you was, know what I originally thought when I saw the method name? That it only removes the leading. Now that you started to talk about removing in the middle, I realized that the method does more, way more than remove. Yeah, and it, it specifically can't remove the leading ones. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, and it can only sometimes remove intermediate ones. Yeah, so Why would it not um, be able to. Remove so one, um, of the, yeah. one of the examples that was given was if you're working with a virtual file system, such as something within a zip archive, you want you don't want something that's bound to the actual file system in any way, like the existing path APIs are. But this would give you something that can be used inside of that virtual. But, but I see, Anna, because you, say, you can't walk out of the Yeah, when can you not remove them from the middle? So imagine that you've got um, a folder name, dot, dot, more folder names. You can remove the folder name, but not the dot, dot. You have to move it to be part of the original. Um, and if you had something like folder name, folder name, dot, dot, you could remove one of the folder names and then compact everything else together. But there's sometimes where you have to keep it and move it to be part of the initial. Because well, if you're A, like A, dot dot B, that's B. Right. But so you, you remove that one. If you're A, dot dot 
dot dot d. Yeah. That's dot dot d. Yeah, you, so you have to keep one of the dot dots in that case. Yeah. Well, but any that remained would be at the beginning. Right. Uh, so, or there would be yeah. a series of them at the beginning. Right, right. and that, that's what I was so, trying to say. So you see, my naming uh, comment is more about all the other methods on path. They are kind of like, I don't care whether the resulting thing will let you access the, you know, a proper path of the file system. You want it, you know, the thing to be split, you want it, the drive to be gone, it's gone. This one does way more. It, it, well, this one actually does a lot less because literally the only thing this is doing yeah. is looking at dot and dot dot. I mean, get full no, path is a lot more. I assume that it has all the uh, semantics that we just discussed. Yeah, described. but it would be it's logically a subset of what get full path yeah, does. This, this is just string parsing. It's not. It's it's yeah. not aware of the file system of invalid characters of. Yeah. You know, uh, it just. Whatever it believes a path character yep. is, is the only thing. It doesn't try it. doing like tilde one whatever expansion. It doesn't try following uh, UNC path. It just removes relative segments, yeah. which are dot dot dot, and those are consistent on all file systems. So it could be called mm -hmm. like remove redundant relative segments, and then maybe now we're actually describing because remove relative. Uh, I agree does yeah. sound like if you gave it the path dot dot that it will return back the empty string, uh, but those are actually different. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, uh, maybe this is the adding the word redundant it helps figure out what it's going to do. Because again, it's not going to normalize casing because it doesn't know if you're casing. So, what about sensitive. remove redundant segments? Forget about relative. Because actually, it removes more than just relative, correct? If you have, okay. if you do a dot dot, yeah. it removes both dot dot and a. They can live with yeah. that. Yes, so remove redundant and then on the try. Remove. We should rename buffer to destination. Yeah. All right. So let me paste this guy in then. And then it had a reason for not you or for it preferred source, but then it said it should match the logical overload name for clarity. Or was hoping for collapse as the verb. What is going to be the handling of this in a file system where one form of slash is illegal and the other form of slash is allowed and therefore you've got dot slash something in a name. It won't work. Is there, it, this has no notion of a file system. Yeah. This doesn't make any P invokes at all. Right, but so how is it going to differentiate between forward slash and backslash for directory separator characters? Whatever here? path dot directory separator says. Yeah. On Unix it says okay. forward slash, on Windows it says backslash. No, so, I, I, I don't think it would use that, to be honest. I mean, that's a good question for Jeremy. Yeah, but, because this uh, has to be aware of, like, on Windows, both are valid because you could have a UNC path versus a file path. Uh, and sure. it, so... It, it, it's forward slash on all platforms. Yeah, or it could be, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm looking at the actual comments. Okay. Uh, so, so they're using Unix path only. Okay. They would probably, to be honest, they would probably do backslash as well. But, yeah. yeah the, because the thing is, it, it needs to be consistent across all platforms because one of the core scenarios was doing stuff like zip. I think path is stuff. fine for that one. So, so what? I think path is fine because then it matches the overloads better. It's the, this is just, the same argument. You say other. destination here, but that should be destination and span should have a capital. Sorry, let me let me let me rephrase what I read. Sorry, it will, both what? slashes all platforms. Capital they, span. They spelled span wrong. Yeah. Yeah, because for example, on X4, um, the only disallowed characters are null, forward slash, just dot, and just dot dot. No, there, there's a comment from 2018 <laughs> that says both forward and backslash. Well, okay. A keyword with a generic argument? Yeah, no, because, that's because, because, um, <laughs> that, that means on Unix it will fail for, for paths where you've okay, got something no, like dot, slash, dot backslash yeah. uh, name dot CS, which is a valid file <clears throat> name on X4. Yes, but I can't imagine anyone does that in practice. Uh, well, you do. I no, hope they do all the time. Like when you accidentally They're... tap in a Windows path and then run it on Linux. No, uh, it's a, well, yes, there's the person who does it on accident because they don't realize they're in a thing where it's going, or where it's wrapped in quotes. And then there are the hackers who are trying to write something that you can't correctly write because the first backslash gets interpreted as an escape well, character. I don't necessarily care about our yeah. framework behaving correctly when it sees a file system that someone has done weird stuff to. Yeah. What do you think? What, the, what, what would that mean? 
Well, well no, toy. because that's going to call the uh, the slice method, which we said returns the. It's not going to call method. slice method because char doesn't have a slice method. What happens when we add an indexer to well, a static no, indexer? No, because it's not it's not an invocation. Oh, it's, right. a, it's a type declaration syntax. We can add a static indexer to char. Yeah, but that, but that's a type syntax. That's not a, that's not an indexer, okay. right? Christoph's proposing a new type. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll stick with the current span. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, because where are you going to put the read only? Language keyboard. But yeah, the read only char. Const. Bracket, that, <laughs> it's called const. Oh, okay. It's so, not const because it can change on the. No, it, it's called m sharp. <laughs> I remember all the read only's. Yeah. It's, it's a const slice of const char. Well, that's C. <laughs> Midori wasn't that terrible. No, it only had the. So where are we now? Yeah. So we just and then everyone was debating on what the implicit one should be. Oh, yeah. we, I think we already I... have like file system APIs that don't behave correctly when they see like weird characters in tabs and I'm not worried. As... Yeah, this may have been while you were out, Jeremy. Uh, folks want access to the raw array backing list of people. No, very much no. That's exactly the guidance that I said do not do. Uh, do not give underlying <laughs> access to the thing because if as soon as you resize, it's corrupt. You like oh, it's not corrupt. It just doesn't modify it anymore. But if it uses the array pool, you have destroyed the yeah. universe. It, it, yeah, but list yeah, we, list we can't clear right. But uh, it, it's like the reason for that is if you ever give anyone access to your internals via a spam, mm -hmm. if your internals are ever allowed to change, such as list which grows, yeah. then your program is now in a very non-deterministic state. Right, they'll end up with. Oh, I called the as span, and then like I'm doing things, and then like I added more things, and like some of these things work, except if you hit a list grow boundary, it gets weird, and so like yeah. no, we should never add this. Well, so literally never. The, the proposal here isn't to add it to list; it's to add it to a special runtime interop services collection marshal class for performance critical scenarios. For performance critical scenarios, don't take list. <laughs> What do you suppose? What do you propose people use for a dynamically growable collection? You use the array. You call the resize yourself, and then you pass the span. It turns out that's exactly what list does. But don't use list. Use the thing that you control and can pass the span on. If you're in highly performance scenarios, you will write ass ugly code to do it. I'm fine with that. This is no. <laughs> well, another solution to this problem, this scenario for growable collections, is you add, you know, a list span type, which points to list, and stores index and that. It's not as fast, but sorry, what? Basically, you add a, a dedicated type that stores reference to the whole list. So you, list you expose a, a list view type. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, exactly. I feel like Would, this is a symptom of not having something like a list builder type. Yeah. Um, there are so many people who want some sort of growable array and yeah. end up handwriting it. When when this came up for review initially, my biggest concern wasn't actually the like safety aspect. It was the fact that we're now saying conclusively list of t has to be packed by backed by contiguous memory, which. We've never officially said in the past. Yeah, but we will never change it. I mean, the we performance could, characteristic change for regular usage of list of t would be so. So massive. remember, string builder used to be <clears throat> until recently backed by contiguous memory, and I then know. we decided it was faster to chunk. Because it. you don't index into string builder. Right, but list list is required to be yeah. O of one access time. It's required to have amortized. O no, of it's it's it just it, the, the spec says required to have O of one. Indexing. Not just amortized? It doesn't say amortized, it says it okay. must have O of 1 indexing. Which spec? The ACMA um, 335 spec, in, which has the TR84 subset, which defines the core lib types and their required implementation. Okay. Yeah, regardless of this, I think the idea was does the list of T is the generic builder type, which was supposed to be this super low overhead global array type. Right. Yeah. And most other languages expose some way of getting a view of their growable types. Well, the other thing is keep in mind we had other APIs people asked for on list of T, like move and other things that we said, well, where do we draw the boundary, right? And then the suggestion was, well, if we give them a generalized way to do it, 
then this would be the catch-all hanger for those. And you could do it. You could do it safely <coughs> in all the cases except for where someone gets a snapshot of it and then on the same thread grows it and then tries to access the underlying span. Why do we need to be able to thread? thread? We well, we don't say the these types of threads safe, so that doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I, I really, 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 really do not think that. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Are you not running into the issue with not having this API? I understand problems with the API, but I wrote code when I was thinking, geez, it would be nice if I had a method like this. But there's spam doc, or there's list dot copy to it, though. Well, yeah, but you don't want to have to keep on creating another copy of an array just to be able to use it in some other method that takes a span, etc. So this is really useful for doing things like mutating the list, I guess, because otherwise you would just get a read-only span view of it. Right, and the, the only place where it's corruptible is you're either doing multi-threading, in which case it doesn't matter whether you're using span or not, you can just corrupt it, these aren't thread-safe types, or you've got a single method where you snapshot the span, you grow the list, which causes the span to no longer be valid. And I mean, the guidance there is basically yeah. don't create a span and then call yeah. other methods while yeah. the span is so still see, like, I think this, the one that gets you memory is kind of less safe because you yeah. can store memory for later. So you don't have to be like in one routine doing really stupid things. Yeah. Yeah. You can just store it for later and think that it still represents the, the list, which it doesn't. The one that gives you span, you would have to write code that is pretty dumb. Like, you know, like yeah. in the same method right. uh, or on the same code stack, you modifying the list while reading the span. I mean, like, I feel better about this if what we're doing instead of saying as span is we make list be pinnable. So we add the git, like, we make it so that it has an extension somewhere, the git reference, and you can put it in a fix, and then you can build the span yourself. Like, we gave you access to the thing as a pointer and, like, Life is over, I don't care. Well, anymore. we can now print to spend, right? Yeah, yeah, but to me, that seems better than making an as spend. Okay, that, of like, uh, you had to go out of your way, you put it in a fixed statement, like, like you. it is a, I, mean, I am doing nonsense, I am going to deal with the consequences it, of nonsense. Is that any more nonsensical than adding, using system runtime interrupt services, which automatically puts you in a, I'm doing unsafe shit, and then... But it, nowhere on here does it say unsafe. I mean, we could if you call say, it dangerous as span, if that solved your problem. That we'll would that would solve a little bit of my problem. Uh, I mean, Marshall is basically the word that you created. It is already like our, our community doesn't understand that. Sure, well, but, I think but that's the this information we have. If that's an argument, then all the Marshall APIs are problematic because one of them say not anyway. not necessarily because like go on Stack Overflow for instance. Like when people see things like int pointer or void star on the existing Marshall class. Like, they know, oh, in pointer, this is not a type I'm familiar with. Like, pointers, pointers are scary, dangerous, whatever. Like, if you go on Stack Overflow and just look up stuff, just look up people using the memory Marshall class, like, people don't realize that that's actually type safety violations left and right from that class. Like, people just see, oh, memory Marshall, nothing in here looks dangerous, nothing in here has any word that tells me that there's danger, so copy and paste this answer that has 2,000 upvotes. Yeah. Well, and Jan's comment was this shouldn't go on memory marshal and it should not be an extension method. And yeah. they're not extension methods because they they want you to do the additional typing to get access to it. Yes. So why, yeah. why not on memory marshal? Uh, it doesn't deal with memory. Yeah, it doesn't deal with memory or span directly. It deals with getting <clears throat> like, Jan, apparently. <laughs> well, we, we don't want to use that type as like a dumping ground for all for all of our, like, give me the internals. Well, it. no, no, it's it's a type for dealing with spans and memory, whether they are inputs or outputs. Mm, I don't know if I agree with that statement. But yeah, so, I mean, if we, if, like, I don't know. The, to me, this this feels very much like we, we just okayed the guidance that says, don't return a span <laughs> unless it's an input argument or a constructor argument, which is an input argument. Uh, this is very much not that. List has its own buffer, it can move its own buffer, the moment you give back the span, the the universe, like yes, we can say, well, it's your bug. You're the idiot who got the span and then called add. Like if, if if we wanted to expose us, first off, why deal with span and memory directly? Like, why not just give out the array? 
as because so you just can't, cut out spam memory. Well, because you can't represent the thing that the array is bigger than the count. You can list, list all count the same way we did with memory. No, but spam gives you both. Yeah, so well, they're the same. Memory because you gives don't you accidentally back walk out of it. What array am I representing right now as an array segment? We memory marshal try to get array. You give it the memory. If it is array back, it says here's an array segment. You started here and you went that far. But I I don't understand though why why we want to use these like base types when these things actually back by to your right. Because it gives you the thing that actually represents the list. Array does not, basically, the list is not the array. The yeah. array is list and some uh, empty space. So array segment of T. Well, how is fun works? Because arrays actually have wider ecosystem support. Yeah. No, but then it actually has the arrays. problem that Jeremy is saying, array segment of T you can store for later. And be very surprised. Well, I, mean, I, I, think, I think the difference here is... Well, what can you store for later? Memory of T. Yeah, I said I would not add memory. Yeah. Here. I would just add the one that's returns yeah. your span. Yes. And then basically, you are in the same, synth, you know, <laughs> kind of around, and if you call add, you know, yeah. it's... I mean, people can still do it, I agree with you, because people may not be aware that a single add can invalidate the span, but at least, you know, it's in your code. Versus memory can be kind of dangerous because you fish it out and then you store it for later. And yeah. So as an instance method or extension method, uh, my answer is hell no. Um, uh, if it's a collection marshal, we promise we're never going to make it an extension method. I would prefer the word dangerous be in it somewhere. If we believe that marshal says that, Levi says people don't actually understand that. Um, but uh, again, the memory one is no. Like, yeah. you, you already have a span factory. List is itself the span factory. Once you have the as span, you don't need the second span factory. Of it. Well, I think they, they accomplish the same, two different things, right? Like span is, I want to operate on the contents of the list, whereas memory might be, I want to use list as a growable buffer to pass into IO, something well, like that. I, 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 yes, but that's exactly the thing that's super duper dangerous yeah. because any other call to yeah. list.add means no one's reading the memory that you were yeah. passing around it, anymore. And I think if you really want to do something like have a memory, just pass the span around and when you need the, or pass the list around and when you need the span, yeah. call and it. And if you want to make a memory, you can make your own memory manager that takes a yeah. list and, and in its right. span and calls you know, this thing. Like you can do it. I could imagine. Something like, you know, but maybe it's too late. APIs that kind of consume something like list, growable buffer, and gives you give you memory of T. Uh, and now your list of T is done. It's basically this whole. But you know what I mean? Where you kind of use it as a growable buffer. Now you want to pass it to some APIs that accept memory of T. We would we'll, need to make something on list copy. which tells it. Clear doesn't mean set count to zero. Clear means like really give up this array. Like you're done. It's gone. Like we would need a, a and I'm stealing your array now. So yeah. clear clear currently has a behavior where if the T has references, It'll clear actually zeros it out. So it'd be nice to the T. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that brings us back to move semantics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know, this would be like the builder. Like you mentioned uh, before a builder. We yeah. don't have a builder in a sense that I kind of can use it to build and then get memory of the items. Yeah, so uh, I, because I, memory of items is consumed by many APIs and this copy may not be consumed. Yeah, I think span is a good escape hatch for people that want to do, uh, you know, like there was that insert into or, or moving values between yeah. the arrays. Because that, that's where this all came but from. But memory, I don't yeah. think makes sense. I think yeah. memory, something more like a list builder, would probably accomplish what people want to use it for. Yeah. yeah. and. Instead of as memory, there should be as read only span because as span has to increment the version count, um, assuming that the user will modify the contents. Uh, but as read only span avoids the version count increment. Well, except the version uh, uh, count was meant for enumeration. Uh, no, for like. We resize the array, therefore if, if, a numerator if, kind of is... If you set any element, the version count increments. The indexer actually yeah. updates it. So... Yeah, but I think maybe it was overdone. The reason for it was that if you enumerate and things get removed or even added, right. it's kind of hard to have explainable semantics. If an item changes while you're enumerating, who cares? You just like you called it too late or too early. Because if it's a mutable reference, yeah, you can yeah. still mutate it. You just can't wholesale replace the reference. But, yeah. If we're holding people's hands with safety, I'd rather we be consistent since we've already started 
one way of doing it right now. Yeah, I mean, so we really, the question, if we don't have a scenario where we actually need the writable span, I would prefer the read-only one, see also the guy who's using read-only span when you can. Mm -hmm. um, and well, the reason for the mutable one is we've had requests for things like move. That way, in a single operation, you can remove and add, in which case, as span covers that and all those other APIs, people now have a way to build that um, yeah, as long to, as they're not growing the backing yeah. array. I want to implement my own sort on list sure. more yeah. efficiently, correct? This would let you do it. So, I mean, we just need to decide, yeah. I mean, it, I, it's fine to say as span bumps them. There increments the iteration count. If you're for reaching and you call as span, probably we just shouldn't let you do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I think that's. Yeah. Yeah, so Fine. basically your feedback is make sure that it's known it's dangerous and don't make an extension or instance method. And don't make the memory version. Yeah, yep. and no memory version. Um, but yeah, I, I can see the reasons. I really don't like it, but if it's super out of the way and annoying to call that then lets you do what you need to do, then... Fine. It, but if list itself had to, like, here's my list as a span, then, like, that would just be terrible. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So. Whatever happened to the proposal for like the requires unsafe attribute? Um, I don't think it's ever been seriously proposed on the C sharp line repo. So you can only call it in an unsafe bug? Yep. Yeah. That would be nice, nice actually. Yeah, we talked about that of like, we could do this by, it also takes void star ignored. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, you had to do something to pass zero into that. <laughs> it, it's early enough in the cycle that we could seriously propose it to. The language team and reasonably see it get into .NET 5 if we were serious about it. And .NET 5 is a major version, so we could theoretically add it to things like unsafe and just tell people you're moving to a new new major version. You're going to have to update your app. Oh, uh, I get and, and they would just mod wreck the thing so older compilers can. Yep. Yeah, it's fine. It, um, it could be behind a warning wave anyway if we really needed to. Like, yeah, yeah. But yeah, but like if, I would be happy. Like if this is behind an, and again, that's where I was like, if we make it the, the thing that can be used in a fixed statement pattern, then like you had to write on safe code, and then happier with that. If you can do it without writing on safe code, then this is. Uh, well, the, the weird thing about the get pinnable ref is you can use it without writing on safe code. Get pinnable ref. We, <laughs> we actually said get pinnable ref can always be used safely. We don't have any types that have a get pinnable reference method that ever violates. Which safety. is why we renamed it from get dangerous. Yes. But but if you but that gives you the ref to zero. Well, if you, this one doesn't violate. If you didn't make a span, you'd have to use that as the ref constructor. Which I don't think we have one. I think you have to cast it to a pointer. That Correct. No, you uh, have memory to, marshal. Have yeah, it. memory marshal create span ref list dot count. Fair enough. <laughs> then this is the same. Okay. Yeah. This, <laughs> this method is not also type safe. Uh, this it's, method it is, is type, type safe. safe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. Well, type type safe in the sense of yeah. So is type safe. I would like. <laughs> well, is this the shape you want then? Is it worth adding the as read only as a primary thing, or should we just let the span drop the read only? Yeah, to be honest, I'm uh, not sure. I, the the, I the difference is whether the version count is incremented. You're you're basically that's a very good point. Yeah, you're basically saying I'm going to mutate this or I won't mutate this, and so it's safe to continue enumerating or it's not. And then those right. will both be static methods. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm both I accept this. Yeah, and if someone really wants to create a memory from it, we have memory marshal APIs that people could do dumb things with. Well, again, you can make your own memory. Yeah. Man you can make a memory manager type that takes the list. Yeah. And then your span, you just you call this yeah. and the span factory off the off the memory that you return. That, like yeah. it's, it's all you can do it. It's yeah. Unpleasant, and I like it that it's unpleasant. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but you could do it. It is a, it, this method is a click up. <laughs> <laughs> so what prevents this class from becoming the next uh, memory marshal class where people use it without realizing that they can do bad things? Uh, so, well, for one, maybe we actually push through requires unsafe. Yeah. For one, yeah. this can only work on the collections that are defined in system private equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there really isn't much. The problem is that we already have types called like memory marshal, which allow you to like shoot off your foot very easily. So yeah, then that's why the naming convention is already there. Like nothing on memory marshal says dangerous anywhere, which is like yeah, you just take yeah. memory and you do bad things. With it's it. on interop. It's on runtime and interop services. So it's it's uh, the namespace used for low level stuff. Yeah. The the problem, and this might be a weak argument against that, but I 
if I'm working with a long-ish file, then all of the namespaces are going to be at the top system runtime interop services, and I don't necessarily know, you know, 2,000 lines down in this file that I've pulled in APIs that are potentially... No, I don't think it's a dumb argument. I just think that it also means that the type name itself has to be designated. And we use the marshal to basically mean things you do that is interoperable, and so bad yeah. things might happen yeah. if you abuse it. Yeah, and yeah. I think marshal in general but conveys I, that. I would just add these methods to memory. That's what I was getting at, and like, what, <coughs> what do we get from keeping it in a separate I think Jan's argument was slightly like, the other things in memory marshal are really bad. These ones are not quite as bad. So you point them to the other thing. <laughs> but, well, so this one is not as bad, Marshall. <laughs> so what? We should call it not as bad, Marshall. Well, that's what we call it collection, Marshall, not memory, Marshall. Yeah. So, yeah, and I think the big difference is like memory, Marshall, Marshall is really around doing like really low level stuff with spans, mm -hmm. whereas this is creating a span from a collection. Um, and there may be other collection types where this is useful in the future, and there's a centralized place to put those. One other consideration here is with the introduction of this API, we are permanently foreclosing our ability to ever backlist a T by an array folder. Which, Which I, I think, think we is, generally don't want anyway, fine. right? Because bad things will happen. People do that. Yeah, I think you're. I think if yeah. you make modifications like that to list of T, you're going to break WPF and WinForm. <laughs> so I mean, it's it it. There was potential to do it safely, even though list of T is, you know, even though we didn't design the type itself for safety, but it means that we can now never even have that discussion going forward. Well, I mean, and maybe that's okay. Yeah, so you, 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 I remember we had in CodeFX Lab, or maybe still have, it's kind of like a struct builder type. Mm -hmm. It's not even a class, it's a struct. I just want to accumulate it, I'm going to be like doing stuff, and then I want to get memory or span. Mm -hmm. No. What? Like it's the same problem. Yeah, it's the common. same problem, but it says track. Yeah, yeah, I need to be very careful that I don't pass it by value and so on and so on. Yet, it is the way to do some of these accumulation things. It's an yeah. implementation type for me to. So we said there's a major stream builder, right? We can't have a type that is, that is getting the arrays from a pool that basically is a struct because it's like use after free is like you, you 99 percentile now. Well, except. If this type doesn't exist, then I have to implement the same code anyway. Right, which is, which is still better because it doesn't lead to the entire ecosystem. And if you, if you ship Vegas Stream Builder... You're like, saying you want everybody who does it open code it. No, nope. because it's very You're going rare. to use regular string builder. Yeah. And there's language proposals and designs in the work that yeah. should allow you to have better ownership semantics of refs. Yeah, if we if we actually had a concept of move only types, yeah. like I would feel much better about yeah. actually making value string builder yeah. public. By the way, I'm not talking about string builder. I'm talking about t builder. Well, value string builder is similar to your t builder, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's yeah. the same. But uh, very often I need a type that is basically a collection. Yeah. You know, yeah. array of t builder. Yeah. yeah, but <laughs> this is like the same issue on why we can't currently expose fixed size buffers over an arbitrary type and things mm -hmm. like that, and so. Yeah. So There's, the move semantics uh, issue, have you talked to Jared about it? Because that's another thing, I talked to him many times about it. And, uh, yeah. I mean, we can, we can all discuss over lunch or whatever. Yeah. So. Are we still streaming? We're still streaming, yeah. Okay. So you can't bitch about Jared yet. Yeah, no, I can't. <laughs> um, as, far, as far as I know, Jared's still working on the proposal for how to improve ref and yeah. how they can be okay. used in yeah, scenarios yeah. like that. There have been some some interesting edge cases. Uh, Jeremy Kay found them earlier uh, while working with things like path, uh, path segment, path build, or something like mm -hmm. that. But there, there are some fundamental things like that they have to work through first. Yeah, right. let's go through Yeah, because right. Jeremy needs it, there's proposals <laughs> on my end that, that need it. And